X Men. All right, we have two X Men books this week. We are starting off with X Men number fourteen. This is Ten of Swords, part twelve of twenty two. Um, last we left off, the agent, the uh, the champions of Krakoa have descended upon uh, the Starlight Citadel, and uh, Apocalypse has just realized that his wife has been annihilation this whole time. Uh, so you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> now he's just moping outside. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and his uh, his <laughs> he's not really even looking at anything. He's just literally walked outside so he could stare at the grass. Breathe, taking some fresh air. <laughs> ah, man, I need a breather. Damn, I haven't seen her in years, and now she's my sworn enemy. And now this. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> and that's when uh, Genesis Sheesh. appears again, and Genesis is like, "Are you hiding?" Bitch! <laughs> Did you come here to take refuse? refuse? <laughs> she does not let him... Yo, she doesn't... Um, She's mean. She is mean. She's mean. <laughs> you know, maybe sometimes I can be a little sensitive. Like, alright, earlier this morning, I was making some bacon, and my girlfriend was like, you're gonna burn the bacon, and I caught such an attitude. <laughs> I was like, "You couldn't have said it nicer." Sometimes that happens, sensitive, right? It happens, you know. And I, I was feeling vulnerable. You I mean, know that what I mean? Because, because then it just it, gets, you know, it just gets more so, like you don't believe in me. Look, <laughs> look I, I look. I mean, I was being sensitive, but this bitch yo genesis she is mean yeah no yo, she... apocalypse t- did nothing wrong yo apocalypse, what I've seen so far. apocalypse is literally like been a good boy this whole time just like yeah mm. he's like I-, I had multiple events in marvel i never I remarried mad rap there i lost a lot of times but mm, so did you bitch <laughs> Actually, <laughs> quite the contrary. Apparently, like Genesis has just been kicking ass, and yeah. has just come to rub it in. Essentially, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's actually pretty. Like she shows up, and they're basically talking. You know, uh, they. You, she's like, "Why you had? So you have the Twilight Sword now. You just, you just have it now. The end of the the worst sword in the world. You just have it. You, yeah. You have you forgotten? You know, the thing that split our island in two." Then caused you to go to hell, bitch. And uh, Genesis is like, yeah, I got it, but you know, it's not as dangerous as I am. I'm pretty cool. It, it was actually pretty easy work to get it. Uh, so yeah, basically they go off and they have a conversation, and basically we get the same. Wait, 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 wait. Before we even get into that, so there's a real oh, here's a real petty moment, right? So she says. All right, Apocalypse gets really upset, you know, because he's talking to her about the fucking sword and all of that. And she goes on to say, uh, do you know what happened to us? Such and such, you know, we don't have to fight or whatever. We're just going to talk. And she, yo, like, it's like everything she says is taking a little stab at it. Cuts, cuts like and she's knife. saying... Yeah, yeah, he's like, because, uh, like, Apocalypse is physically upset. She's like, ah, oh, don't worry about it, man. I just, don't you want to hear about what, what, what really happened? Stop overthinking on, like, why it. Don't we, why don't we go over here? Because I know you'd much rather uh, talk yeah. than do other things. Yeah. Yo, I was, oh, you're right. I was mad for him. but And then she called him M. Naba, sir. She didn't even say about it. <laughs> and so, yeah. yeah, he used, she used his government. I don't know this clown-ass alias that you're going with. Now. You know that's not my name. You know my name is Apocalypse now. Or or better yet, call me. You don't see this A on my belt? The fuck? <laughs> you bitches, say, you blind? Does it that say E? Make you blind, too? It doesn't say E for N. Sabanur. It's nah, she and, was she was just really rude. She was really rude to him. <laughs> Apocalypse has the patience of a saint too. He's just like, all right, let's talk. They all walk together. Bro, that's his wife. Not even his ex. That is still his yeah, wife. Yeah, that is that still he's his just wife. Been missing They're holding hundreds. hands. It's kind of sweet. His that big ass is. doofy hands as they walk down, and she goes to tell him tales of hell. Uh, <laughs> tales of hell. Yeah, <laughs> literal hell. Um, so yeah, we get again the mutant's history of Araka and uh, Araco plus the fallen world of Amanth. And you know, these little things on the side of the uh, the pages sometimes of these informational things where it says like the one land, ex Okara, ex Araco. I read them sometimes. Yeah. 
The one at the very bottom says Summoner Lies. And I think, mm. which is what basically what she said <laughs> to him earlier. She's like, yeah, and do you want to hear what happened to me? Because the summer has been lying to you and telling us what's really been happening with you, but lying to you about us. And that is, which is another insult that Apocalypse has to burden. He's like, had his grandson basically lie to his face about his wife. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you know the story. We've gone over it a little bit. Things do change. We do get a little bit more perspective. But you know the story. First, starts on on yeah. uh, Oraka. Uh, fucking the Twilight Sword breaks through, and the Emmons demons also pull up. Uh, in order to save the planet, uh, Genesis and the Four Horsemen uh, enter. Araco, the other half of Krakoa, and as it descends into hell, which is basically uh, Ameth, to uh, in order to keep the Ameth from coming out and um, and fucking shit up on Earth. When they first got there, they find a bunch of dead Ameth demons because the White Sword has just been killing all of them all the time, <laughs> uh, and that has given them. The they sent them in earlier, like way earlier, before like they closed the uh, gap. Right. Uh, so that bought them enough time to kind of set up their facilities. They created 10 towers, and from those towers, they fucked shit up on the daily. Um, but they were pretty much imprisoned in those towers. Uh, she references that moment where she basically tells this guy he's uh, he's a coward, and he's threatened to like, she threatened to cut his head off because he told them that they would lose against the uh, and demons. So she's like, you know what? I'll show you this. And then, you know, she fucks off with an army of uh, of Arako, uh, Arako mutants as they go through and start killing demons. And eventually they find the White Sword. Uh, he's an external. He's a healer. Uh, and he is the baddest man on, on Arako. Um, but he went crazy because he's been, for thousands and thousands of years, he's just been fighting demons with his 100 champions. They all die every day, and every morning he resurrects them. Uh, yeah, he's an, he's an Okara mutant. An mm -hmm. external... Wow, that is crazy. He's actually an external. Yeah, the Okara mutants are apparently, like, just OP. Like, I don't know how the Krakoan mutants are going to do anything against them, because they seem to be absolute monsters. Um, For sure, this guy... <laughs> There's this moment where, mm -hmm. like, she explains what happened between them in a little bit. Is that, you know, he went crazy, and when the uh, Arakan demons, uh, Arakan um, mutant shows up, he just starts killing them, too, because he's just lost his mind. All he knows is war. So, you know. And uh, she mentions that it wasn't that he just killed us. It's that the first time we lost since we got here. It's because one of our own went wild and killed us. So... She fucked off and tried to go back home because fuck this noise, and where she finds Iska the unbeaten, and uh, she at first is like, "Yo, my sister's back! Yay!" You came back from Emma? Yeah, you came back to join hey. us in Morocco. Hey. What up? And she's like, "No, I know you guys are losing, so you know I'm here on behalf of Annihilation. Uh, Annihilation would like to parlay, so you know Genesis ain't scared. She's like, you know what? All right." I'll go see what this bitch wants. And uh, literally, not for <laughs> any reason, but just, you know what? I ain't no bitch. I just took an L, but I'm about to bounce back and smoke this <laughs> shit. I'm about to bounce back. <laughs> Let's see what he has to say. Yeah. She goes over and she actually discovers, I don't know if this was like revealed before, but No. Uh, yeah, apparently um the Ameth demons have just been snatching mutants from uh Arako and the actual them. mutants that scrambled at first when they first got there, remember oh, they yeah, said yeah, like yeah. uh like a tenth of them yeah. bounced? You're yeah, right. the the Ameth demons captured them and have been breeding with them to yeah. make so, this army of nas of, of demon, not nasty but you know demon mutant and demon hybrids. mutants, yeah. So, yeah, that's what the uh Ameth army has, and that's why they're such a big deal. Like if they were the demons on their own probably wouldn't be so bad but now they're also have like x-men powers uh oh yeah <laughs> not great like, i mean genesis kind of spoke about it from the from the aspect of oh like i was mad because that was our family she yeah was, i don't think he was well i'm i that's the threat yeah. that i'm perceiving but also yeah you're right genesis does say like you know what no that's the point i didn't realize that they had x-men powers and that's <laughs> it's no point that's gonna play a day yeah, that, that matters later that matters later. Yeah, but what? Yeah, Josh yeah. is right though. He, uh, she was more like, 
Yo, they basically just bred our people forcibly, and like. Yeah, she was like, "Sorry, we can't just kill all of them." Damn. Uh, but she was still mad. She yeah. Was, so was she, like, as soon as a uh, annihilation showed showed his masked face. Yeah, she was like, she "Square was right. up!" And then they fought, and. This is where the new information comes in, is that um, Summoner told Apocalypse when he first got, uh, when he was explaining this history, is that uh, Genesis died here. But actually, Genesis kicked Annihilation's ass and took the crown from them. Um, yeah, and then came back home. Didn't want to put it on, sent him out. Yep, because if you put it on, you're pretty much dead, I guess. Uh, and you don't really want to be ruler of this place, because whoever wears this thing has to be queen of it, or king of it. Um. But because she didn't, she hesitated wearing it so long, the Emmet demons just go fucking berserk. And uh, because there's no one to keep them in check anymore. So they don't care. They'll just like storm you until you can't handle it anymore. And it's not even that they were just storming it. It wasn't the normal hordes that they were mm-hmm. used to. These were X Men powered hordes as well. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't just. So they like destroyed them hordes. fucking t- one of them towers, and that was it, man. Hey. Lost, yeah, even so, even like as she watched a bunch of mutants just die and they destroyed the towers and all that stuff, she still refused to put it on. But she heard of, you know, the mute like the alchemist mutants that helped build them. They just got impatient because she was there thinking like, "Yo, we gotta wait it out. Apocalypse is gonna come back with this army of Krakoan demon, uh, yeah. Krakoan mutants, and we'll be good." But uh, all these mutant alchemists are like, "Fuck that shit," and um. They got impatient. They sent the summoner through. And, uh, yeah, that's basically where, you know, we pick up what we know. Um, the rest is history. Summoner shows up on Krakoa. All this shit gets set into motion. Um, and she's like, and, yeah, that's how. Uh, oh, yeah, while, sorry, I forgot this little tidbit. While the summoner was gone, Genesis finally decided to put on the helmet of Annihilation and she basically, I think she just became possessed by it. Yeah. Uh, which... But she's not she, She's not weak, so she didn't die immediately. And she still has her own personality, kind of. Mm-hmm. But her will has been taken over by Annihilation. And everything it wants to do, she wants to do not to. Right. It's one of those, like, you know, I'm still your wife, but not really. <laughs> no. I it was interesting. It, it was, at first, I didn't really care for the, for the, for the issue because... Uh, I just felt like, oh, we've heard all of this already, and it's just, it's too similar, you know? Yeah. Hickman does this a lot, and usually it's really entertaining, but they kind of did it too much. Um, yeah, uh, I actually this have a note about story. that. <laughs> but after, again, after going through this again, I think it was really important because through the story, now we understand exactly what happened, and it's not simply a matter of, oh, his wife got taken over. She made a conscious decision. She knew what was going to happen, and she was like, you know what, it's time, because shit. Oh, it's already, you know, we already said that we, you know, the whole point of sealing us off was to keep these demons away and these portals out. And mm-hmm. once the people started fleeing, that was it. She was like, man, fuck this shit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get my mutant army, and we out. We're we going to take over the world. Yeah, and, you know, we cut back to the present. Apocalypse is like, you can still fight Annihilation. And she's like, nah, she's too strong. I can't do anything. We're fucked here. And um, Apocalypse is like, look, man, I, I built something here for all mutants, including you. If you fight this, we can still like kind of figure this out and you guys can live on Krakoa with us. And she's like, yeah, I'm not going to live on your soft little baby boy island with your soft little baby boys. I'm going to I'm going to kill you guys and, you know, take over Krakoa. And that's that. And that's where the issue kind of ends. It's like, I'll see what you got, but I ain't losing. Um. Yeah, this is a. I really enjoyed this issue, Josh. What you felt about like the story happening again? I felt about the last time that did this because my note about it is that this is the third time they've told this story. Yeah, uh, and pretty much three times in a row because the X Men books in particular were the telling of these stories. We had the first one with the Summoner. We had Apocalypse mm-hmm. tell his version, and now we have Genesis tell hers. So I think what Hickman was trying to do here, because this is what he does, like Hickman lives in the stories that he doesn't tell. Like he's kind of like a like a master, <laughs> like a master of withholding information from people. Uh, he basically did this Rashomon to kind of story where it's the same story from three different points of view. And this is like hopefully the final part of it, because if the next X Men issue is just the story yeah. from like War's point of view, I'm gonna be like, all right. 
right, yeah, I, I'm not mad. I'm not dissatisfied. Mm-hmm. I was just kind of like, as I got through it, I understood that nothing was going to be magnified that much. It's just kind of, you know, the little bit of information. Yeah. What else? Uh, I liked it. It was cool. I, it helped that there was another issue up next yeah. in, my, in my mind. As I read it, when I, as I got to the end, and I was like, ah. Oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah, as much as but... I, I did enjoy this X-Men issue, um, we have to move on to our next one. Uh, Marauders number 14, X of Sor- 10 of Swords, part 13 out of 22. Uh, I liked X-Men a lot. This was my VGI. Certified VGI. VGI. <laughs> Certified very good issue. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. I'll say that. Oh, boy. Okay, so as we found out last week, uh, the the champions of Krako and Arako are not going to just start fighting immediately. They're going to have uh, a dinner together, and then they're going to fight the next day, I guess. Parley. Parley. And um, this issue is pretty much that dinner. Um, we open up in like kind of like the afternoon, the evening. You know, the sun's going down, whatever. Everybody's just chilling. Champions of both Arako and Krako are kind of mingling. Mm-hmm. They're just chilling at this dinner party. Pogger Pog is like throat. Pogger Pog's throat is is quenched. Bring forth libations so it couldn't be drenched. And I'm like, God damn it, Pogger Pog. Um, Cipher is just chilling in the corner, just terrified for his life. <laughs> I think he's trying to talk to yeah. somebody. He just goes, Hey, I don't know who he's talking to. He says, Hey to Iska. Oh no, no, and no. She's like, <laughs> Was it Iska? I thought he was saying, Hey to um, not Iska. Um, to, to, to Bay, Bay, Bay the Moon? Blood Moon. Or something. Blood Moon. Yeah, he goes, hey, to Blood Moon. And then Blood Moon's just like, avert thy eyes, soft boy. Yeah, she violated. Yeah, it's not fun. Um, I love Bay the Blood Moon. Soft boy. So, soft, soft boy. That's exactly soft. what you called him. Uh, yeah. Storm walks up to Logan and is like, I know what you're thinking. And Wolverine's like, I know. You're going to try to stop. You're going to try to talk me out of it. And Storm's like, nope, just don't miss. And, uh, you know, the dinner starts to commence. Um, Magic and Pogger Pog have a funny moment. And then they enter the, the dining room. Big two-page spread. Big dramatic goblet table. All right, Saturnine. Yeah, right, Saturnine. She's, <laughs> she is one 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 interesting character. Yeah, man. Is, she is just... Like if extra, I don't know what is good with this with Hickman in this character, man. If extra was a person. Yeah, this this table kind of sucks. I wouldn't buy this shit. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have it in your dining banquet hall. Like, yeah, no, like TBH. That. Not good. And what's just with looks the cloth? Stupid. It's the cloth that really fucks it up. The tablecloth is dumb. <laughs> There's a bunch. Yeah, of but the shape. Why is it the shape of a of a? Just get a regular ass table from IKEA and call it a day, dude. There's like, no IKEA in other world. Leave. Yo, are you kidding me? Of course, there's an IKEA in other world. Yo, yo, check it out. Poggy Pog's like, uh, he says, Poggy Pog's way is black. Make your way, lest he be not. <laughs> <laughs> bars. Yo, this thing is like a rhyming guy. He's spitting bars. Life. He's a rhyming right? guy? <laughs> so, man, yeah, a rhyming guy. You know, like Solomon Grundy or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These rhyming so, guys. He's a rhyming guy. Yeah, so uh, Magic is, she's so, I guess she's talking to Magic, and she's like, well, Magic, uh, Magic couldn't give a damn. <laughs> I'm magic. I was like, oh man. Oh, magic. She's, she's spicy as hell. <laughs> the best. Um, yeah. So basically, they all gather in this dining hall. Um, this lady, uh, Saturnine, she introduces all the other lords of other world that are there. Pestilence is there, and she's like, "Pestilence from the Dryador Kingdom." He's like, "I told you this oh, is not the he's Dryador." Not fighting. He's Yo, not. Pestilence and right. um and wow. uh and uh the diseased person is not fighting. Oh I wow! I didn't even notice. I thought they were all fighting. I think he's famine. Wait, he is famine. Pestilence? No, no he's pe- famine. And yeah, pestilence is not fighting either. Hmm. I did. I didn't peep that. Wow. I guess. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> all right. So famine's like it's not fucking Dryador. It's a Rocco now. God damn it! Didn't we already explain <laughs> to you? Didn't I show you that fancy hologram? Saturn, I don't want to be poisoning their seas and. Destroying all the architecture. Listen, man, I don't want to be a stickler here, but we already had a conversation about this. It's fucking Arako <laughs> <Right>. now. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah. So yeah, Wolverine. Right. Wolverine is. She's like anyway. So yeah, they run. They read it to Dryador. Yeah. <laughs> she says it again. Yeah, I don't know. If Wolverine is just sauced because he's just like starting shit left and right. Uh, yeah, right. Braddock, why didn't you cheat on your wife? Dude, you could have made it's this so whole funny. Thing not happen. Dude, it is a really funny exchange where Wolverine's like, "This could all be over if you just fuck Saturnine," and, Br- and Brian Braddock is like. I'm married, and he's like, "Cheat on her, cheat on mm-hmm. her." <laughs> do it. Who cares? I, I I do it to protect everybody. You should too. Damn. And, and I'm just like, bro, you're wild, son. There's no way she would have just dropped all of this after getting some. You know what I mean? Come on. Yeah. This, that was not going to be the case. You know? <laughs> nice try, Wolverine. He's just. Yeah, he just. I I don't know if he's like he because he's been drinking all day. So I'm like, he's just probably sauced and feeling some type of way. But, yeah, uh, Betsy says, "Back the fuck up, bro." Yeah, dude, what Before the fuck? I send a mind, I blow up your brain and take your spot. Yeah, she's basically she basically tells him to fuck off. <laughs> she's like, "Yeah, all right, you're getting on my nerves here." Um, there's this cool moment, like Gorgon and Magic are chilling, just trying to like size everyone up. You know, they're trying to find the, they're like guessing who's bet, like. Who, which dominant hand for each warrior of Araka? He's like, War is right hand. Yo, they are on it. Maddie has not stopped. Gorgon's too. He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. The language of spice is in full effect here. As they're just like, yeah, War is right handed. I think we could take him on. Chunky Dinosaur seems to be a bit of a problem, but, you know. It's going to be a problem. <laughs> I like how she admits it. Yeah. So, you know, what do you think, uh, what do you think Iska's deal is? And, you know, they try to, like, they try to, like, try to figure out all stealth. You know, they drop their glasses, and then Iska catches both of them with both her hands because she cannot be beaten. Yeah, right. She is ambidextrous. She can't be beaten. <laughs> she, she may not even be ambidextrous, but she needed to be in that moment to win that little like, petty exchange. So for that moment, she was ambidextrous. God, imagine mm-hmm. imagine the power to be so, like, just be so undefeatable that you even win in every petty exchange. <laughs> Every petty exchange. If you, you had the last word in every argument. <laughs> talking um, mad shit in Fortnite. right. <laughs> <laughs> because the complaints. <laughs> Being oh, constantly man. correct in Overwatch. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, so, yeah, she's ambidextrous. Gorgon's like, mm, ambidextrous. And uh, then she tries it on them. She's like, how about you guys? She drops the glasses that she just caught. And Magic uses her limbo powers. To uh, just teleport the ship, like open a gate, like portal, like the video game portal. She does it on the yeah. floor, lands from the ceiling, and they catch it. Not a drop spilled. And Iska's like, "This is so extra." I'm, <laughs> I'm living for it. Well, <laughs> the funny thing is, they they're trying to find out. Oh, what hand? What hand are you? She just made this chick reveal one of her abilities, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh, and they don't even think about that. That's what's funny. Yeah. Yeah, they really... she says a line about, "Oh, I didn't even drop a spill. Like, you don't, you can't go low on me because I'm I know about that limbo shit." And <laughs> I'm like, "Wow, good job, Magic. She probably didn't even know what the fuck that was about. Maybe yeah. she thought, oh, that's your only power.' Yeah, portals, huh? Easy. And she feel limbo. She's like, "Oh, I know about that." <laughs> My but... favorite thing is at the end, Gorgon is like, "Yeah, she may be the real deal. Kill as many as you can, and uh, because she's going to be a problem." Um. It's really funny. Kill the... as many as you can, as fast as you can. I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. She's. Yeah. She's the real deal here. <laughs> we can't fuck around with her. Um... Assisted with my badass. Yeah. With my badass mm-hmm. powers. Badass powers. <laughs> my badass would... sensei powers. Storm has badass this moment. Badass recognized badass. Storm has yeah. this moment. Where this is going to be serious. <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> I'm going to take this one. Oh, my I'm God. Like... <laughs> I might have to use 25% of my power. (laughs) I was about to say, it's like, "Mm, she's going to have to make me use exactly 73.3% of my power. Yeah. (laughs) When they're fighting, he's like, this should be interesting. He takes off. Looks like that. Looks like I have to go all out. Takes off his leg weights. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) I was about to say, he takes off his gloves and they're like 20,000 tons. (laughs) Uh. Storm has this moment with death where they, you know, she just, I guess, I guess they just explain, exchange spicy moment too, where they both have a, she literally has a dance with death and it's just like, yeah, I've been, I've been courting death all my life. I've been I'm a kid from the streets. Oh. Yeah. I don't know all the, all, I don't know the whole story behind Storm. Obviously I've said many times I do not know the 
very expansive history of X-Men, but there has been a lot of points made about Storm quote unquote flirting with death and almost dying and her just kind of going hard to not die. Apparently she has died in a couple of events. Sure. I think in uh 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 what's one of the events? Um Age of no Age of uh, Apocalypse? No. Onslaught? Ex- I don't remember. Yeah, I don't know. I'm either. sorry. Um, he like, yeah, died like, at some point, though. It looks like death has it. been. Looks like death has been watching a lot of Little Mermaid. Yeah, I mean, I guess. This is Saturnized layer. I don't know what's going on here with the art and all of that, but I guess I'm for it. I don't mind the octopus. I feel like this Pretty is cool. just like a cool little moment where Storm gets to be like, "I'm not afraid of death, bitch. I'm coming." Yeah, she you. stood up to him, man. She she was a no punk. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, they all finally sit down for dinner. Uh, Wolverine sits right next to Saturnine. Uh, War just pull like just po- tries to poison Wolverine right off the bat. <laughs> you think that's poison? Yeah, that's poison. yeah. What else would it be? You think she's just salting? It I don't food? know. I thought she was being petty and was like putting mad salt on his food or something. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> like to be a jerk. Cause like I don't know why they. You think they're scared? It feels weird, right. Wolverine. Oh, I thought that He's like putting... it had to be poison. He's yeah, putting the Ryzen from from Breaking Bad in there. Yeah, Ryzen. <laughs> that's really the funny. Ryzen. <laughs> I mean, I guess she could be just being being nice and be like, "Ugh, this is not seasoned. He is not gonna like this." Salt, salt. No, salt, like, <laughs> like putting it on there, like, salt, yeah, salt, salt. bitch, because she's war. You know what I mean? Like, I'm fucking. <laughs> yeah, what we all know that? that. We all know in war, you salt your you oversalt your opponent's meats. That's the yeah, that's so a common. Dehydrated tactic tomorrow. <laughs> I believe General Patton did that. <laughs> uh, Funny thing is, he doesn't even take a bite of his sandwich before Logan gets up and starts screaming on Saturday night. Yeah, like, God damn it. <laughs> He's like, you blind this. bimbo. It's so funny. Like, War's probably pissed off. He's like, oh, I was going to get him so good. <laughs> <laughs> and the Wolverine just immediately, no, like, almost no fucking trigger for this. He just immediately just gets up and starts shit with Saturday. He's like, you could just stop this. Why are you doing this? Why are you making us die for this? We, If you wanted to, you could send these fuckers packing. Why are you doing this? And then she's like, because I'm extra. <laughs> Basically. She just starts insulting him, calling him like, I know that you're, uh... she's like, I know you have a very singular world view, you know? And uh, Wolverine just gets tight. He uh, he brings out his claws, and the chapter ends with uh, him stabbing Saturnine. Oh no, she's dead. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We'll see. She's not no, dead. come on, man. No. I mean, the odds of her. Dude, keep her dead. Dead. Who actually dies on the last page of a freaking? It's true. Of it. She's gonna right. be like, and she's gonna come out from the bottom of the fucking. <laughs> fucking goblet table and yeah, like, you know who that was? Uh-huh. That was your best friend that you just stabbed. You, know, you, know, like, oh. you sat. I brought Dakin over here. You just stabbed your son. Like, oh, <laughs> d- son. Ah, my God boy. Damn it. God God damn dad, this is gonna hurt a lot. <laughs> um. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. Maybe this is just what the catalyst is. They just start fighting right here, right now. <laughs> they. But um. That'd be hilarious. I'm sure probably that's not what's going to happen. Saturday is more than likely going to survive this, and it'll be fine. Um, but that was Marauders. I really enjoyed this issue. Um, just great, great dialogue all around. It was good to see the... My favorite scene was, like, the Gorgon and Niska thing. That was pretty fun. Yeah. Um, had a good time with that. Uh, any closing statements? Because they're about business, man. Some of them have to be, because these guys are really 